Hello. So, there's a close relationship between planning and estimation, and I'm going to talk a little bit about estimation now. Um, so, when you plan, actually, the ultimate goal is that you can uh, coordinate and define what's going to be your work, such that uh, your estimations are okay and you you, you achieve uh, the results you are expecting in terms of cost and time. And at the same time, uh, by planning, it uh, allows you to, to tune your estimation. So it, it allows you to realize, to be more, uh, uh, to, to have a, bo a more precise understanding of what you need to do and uh, allows you to tune the estimation. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk now. So planning requires estimation. And the point is, is it easy to estimate? You know, so we're going to see several uh, techniques to, to, to do it. Um, but uh, be before, let's think in terms of um, why do you need to do it? And the problem here is that uh, when you develop a system, a feature, usually you have a, cl a, a client and you need to, to, to define a contract. You need to, to have a contract. You need to define what's going to be the cost. And if you don't have a right uh, or a correct idea about what's going to be the price of developing the software, you cannot uh, basically have the contract at all. So, although it's not easy, although uh, it's something that uh, uh, sometimes you would prefer to avoid, actually you need to do it. You need to have a price and you need to, 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 to set this price up front, uh, the software development starts. Of course, there are other types of development you'd, where you don't consider this approach. You try to do it in a different way, and we'll talk about that during the course. Okay? So, the main thing about um, estimation of the, the cost, estimation of uh, what is going to be the effort in the project, is that basically we're going to have a uh, a lot of uncertainty and the main thing that happens is that uh, when it is more accurate it is becomes more accurate when it is less necessary it means that by the end of the project you have a better idea of uh, when it's going to finish and what is going to be the the cost but uh, okay so there are some studies that um, done in the um, by collecting data from uh, real projects and I'm going to show you this. So if you Google on um, project estimation uncertainty, you get these, this graph that uh, everybody refers. And what is interesting about this graph, this graph results from uh, analysis of real projects is that um, if you consider that in this line, it's the cost, the final cost of the project, and these are the variation you have in the estimation at the beginning. And you see that, as I told you, this reduces. But what is interesting is that it, it, it seems that this four time can be four times bigger or four times smaller than the real value. So there's a big, big difference. There can be a big difference between the estimation and, 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 the, and the final value. So that's why we need tools that help us and techniques that help us to, to, to have a more precise value when you, you start the project. So the three techniques we find when you, to estimate the, the effort and the duration of a project, the three techniques, the first one is based on the experience. So we, in the experience of the, 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 the project manager that is doing the estimation, then you have algorithmic cost models, and then you have the we yesterday's weather. Uh, approach. I'm going to talk uh, succinctly about each one of them. For the experience-based estimation, what you really get is that you you have seen this before. So managers that have a lot of experience have been to a lot of projects and may infer what is going to be the cost. Okay. Sometimes what they actually do is they consider that four times variation and they just uh, raise the cost and just uh, uh, propose a higher value. Of course, th there are business involved in this on, uh, as well, and sometimes they just, uh, uh, because they want to get this, this job, they, the, this contract, they, they, they just propose a value that is below. But anyway, this is an afterthought. 
it's important that you realize as a project manager uh, what is going to be the cost. Okay, and the problem here, when it is based on your experience, is that well, software development varies, it changes very quickly. The way you develop software now, the tools you are using now, are quite different from the tools we have been using ten years ago. So this type of experience probably is not uh, completely reliable. Okay. Then you are algorithmic cost model estimation. These approaches have been proposed for a long time and what people try to do is try to analyze, look at databases where there are description of uh, project de software project development and look at the type of software that was devolved, uh, how many people was involved, how long did it, did, did, did it take and so analyze all these things and try to infer a formula to describe it, okay? So they come out with the formula and we've seen, of course, the effort is a matter of the size. So what is the complexity? And even when you talk about size, there are different ways of look at size. It should be the number of features or the lines of code, okay? Think, think that if it is lines of code, you cannot just know the effort before you start implementing. Okay, maybe you can guess about what could be the possible number of lines of code. If it is features, it depends if you have already done uh, requirements engineering, you have already have done the elicitation of the requirements or not. And then you identify uh, several constants here, A, B, and, and M, that are related basically with the type of project we're involved. So th this varies from things like uh, the type of organization where is being developed the software, okay, the, the complexity of the system, okay, which has an in, a non-linear impact on the effort. And then you have uh, the, the product, development attributes, so the technology used, and so on, okay? The problem here is that um, anyway, although you have this formula, you think that these are subjective values. Why? Because you need to, 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 to say, to compare your project, and say, well, what is the my value of M? Is uh, low, medium, high? And so this depends. So you need, in some sense, you need you are comparing your project with the project that already exists in the database that were used to uh, to, to 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 define this formula. Okay. And there is another problem associated with this approach, and the problem is that actually. We don't have so much. They did not use so many different, so, so many different projects to 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 define this. So the databases of uh, projects were very it were small. So this was the final results are not really reliable. Okay, so in some sense, this was used for for a while, but then people just stop using it. Which doesn't mean that in the future that will be a very interesting approach because so the way you develop software is changing quite often, quite quite quickly. And if you think if 10 years ago most of the software was not open source, today you have millions of lines of code, hundreds of thousands or even millions of projects on, on public repositories like GitHub. And, pro and now probably you can start mining all this information and probably be coming out with much more reliable um, uh, values for the estimation, okay? Probably, so not today, but probably in five years, probably we'll have tools that can give you a much more, uh, 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 much more precise value, can give you much more precise values and more reliable values. Okay. Well, this uh, what I've been talking is uh, what was called as Kokomo model. Okay, and uh, so this is a old project. Okay, and then you have you, yesterday's weather estimation, and this is basically on on, on the reality that people say is okay. You are, you know, what is gonna how we are going to perform today? Well, we're gonna perform like yesterday. The way to look at this, this is a bit more, um, I would say, uh, to have the, the feet on the ground. And is related that um, if you think in terms of uh, planning, so we are doing planning, but uh, as soon as you start uh, 
uh, yeah, well, as soon as, uh, uh, as the reality of the development is not according to the planning anymore, what is going to happen probably is that uh, what you need to trust is what is happening now and what not in the, is in the plan. So in, in this approach, actually, uh, you are reestimating every day. That's the main idea. Uh, so it's just you are tuning your, uh, uh, your, your, your estimation every day. Okay? And I will talk about this a bit uh, later because when you follow this approach, you, you, you follow approaches that are not plan-driven approach, that are considered they are not plan-driven. I, and I will explain a little bit why they are not plan-driven. But the, the main idea is that uh, um, you, do, you, don't, you, you avoid to blindly follow a plan you, when you develop software. Okay? Okay, thank you.